pledge allegiance to the flag. Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to tonight's special meeting uh, for the town of Monroe. Just so everyone understands, I call it a special meeting because it wasn't on our regularly scheduled meeting from the ones that were approved for the entire year of 20. A motion to open the town board meeting tonight. I'll make that motion. Who will second? Call the question. Am I? Scancarello, aye. Cardone, aye. Poole, aye. Richardson, aye. Okay. Uh, the reason we're here is by state law, when we notice our public hearing for October 7th, we have to include the salaries of elected officials. So we're here to determine uh, if there's going to be a raise, if there's going to be no raises, if there's going to be partial raises, whatever the town board decides, because that has to be published in the notice that goes out uh, for the October 7th, right? That's the date? October 7th hearing. So I'll open it up to the town board, what your thoughts are. I think we should take it department by department. Uh, you can basically start out with supervisor and then town board, whatever, whatever every, everyone is uh, amicable to do. I do we want to So considering um, that the cost of living has um, increased so much, I, I, I'd, I'd rather that the supervisor's salary and the town board salary remain as is. I don't know if anybody else feels that I, way. I, but will, that's, I will agree with that. I'm, I'm okay with that I as well. I couldn't even imagine looking people in the eye after everything that's gone on with this town board and the position that you're in that you're supposed to keep all of us equally informed of honor the fact that we're all elected to represent the public and and consider raising the salaries after the news that's been in the paper this uh this past few months so absolutely no no raises for the town board I would say, too, the uh, budget's going to be very tight and no raises for the supervisor and town board officials. I would be good at keeping it at the current levels. I'm good with that as well. Okay. I'll make a motion that there be no raises to the supervisor's position or all the town board's position and that their salaries remain the same as they were for the 2024 budget year. Second. Question? Am I? Scancarello, aye. Cardone, aye. Well, aye. Richardson, aye. Okay, so moved. Uh, next up, if you guys could just sign in with the clerk when you when you come in, please. Uh, next up, I, I would say would be the uh, town court, the judges. Any, and Mary, you're uh, the liaison there. So, do you have anything to say? Uh, yeah, they've been working on a very tight budget. They've been hit with quite a few um, hardships because the number of tickets that are coming into the town is not what it was projected to be. Um, there's been changes with the palm tree having its own court now and the way the state troopers uh, were staffed and just several different things where the revenue, and there's a lot of cases sitting out there that have been held over, held over, held over, and uh, it, it, it just hasn't been come to a conclusion where any fines or judgments could be imposed. Um, I know the judges are very concerned about their clerks uh, so um, they're more concerned about them than they are about themselves so I don't know if we need to go to executive session to figure that that portion out because I know right now we're yeah. only talking about elected officials yeah that's a different topic for a different night okay um, as I, I said they're very concerned about their clerks yeah I think your point is that 
for a negotiation standpoint that that if we they, offered them a raise they wouldn't turn it down necessarily but their priority if they had to sacrifice their own salary raise if they had to to give that to their hardworking support staff that that is what they're looking to do so that is something we should discuss oh i don't know if it's possible let's say they they got a raise if it could be allocated later on if their clerks did not get something so that's why i said i don't know if it had to be discussed in executive session or if we continue this discussion out here uh, no i think we should continue this, this discussion out here okay well i think we would just need to see how it affects the overall budget i mean just throwing out who deserves raises on performance for the judges department i mean we would love to have that but if we're not able to do it that's we need those facts so are you suggesting a raise or are you suggesting i'm not certain i'm, I'm it would be nice to have a little bit more information as yeah. to what the final budget could be and what the other employees the rest of the town employees could get but that's not on the table tonight i mean you're, you know you're looking at Revenue, which is coming under under budget, obviously because of the situation, they have cut their court dates in in half, uh, and I, I I think that you know they should probably fall maybe under the same uh, guidelines that the town board has uh, with respect to raises this year. As I said they're very concerned about their clerks. Um, I think they would be willing to take no raises um, and as you said they've cut expenses quite a bit but the revenue isn't there so um, I'll say motion. I'll make a motion to have the judges have their current salaries and not to have any increase so a zero percent increase okay. I'll second any other discussion all the question am I Scancarello I or don't I Cool, aye. Richardson, aye. Okay, so move. Uh, next up is the town clerk. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to say based on the uh, amount of work that has gone into her office, uh, the amount of work and visits, which I'm, I'm, I'm sure have increased. Do you have any numbers on that? The visits. How many people come in? Yeah, that, that you're poised as that let, let me position. finish, Councilman Richardson. Let me finish, well, please. Well, I also have a question. You weren't speaking, well, so if well, you could when, just... When she gives us, gives an answer, then, then you can chime in. Uh, do, do you have any idea of the number of, uh, you know, people that come in there on a, on a daily basis versus what has been in the past? Residents on a daily basis, I would say, have increased. Um, a definitive number that I can't give you. As far as FOIL requests, um, last year, I think the number was for the year. Now, this is going through December. I want to think it was around 270-ish or so. Um, we have topped over 300 right now to date. Um, that's just FOILs? That's just FOILs. The other, the other aspect I know you're going to be dealing with is uh, dealing with the uh, improvement downstairs with respect to the filing grant, of right. records based on the grant that you received so that that'll be an added amount to your uh, your duties have you concluded your points okay um, so uh, this is something that we were trying to discuss previously because um, you'd voiced obviously that the amount of foils have increased so Coming in, I know that I was told just uh, as a precautionary measure that if a resident is asking for information or documents that, especially from um, full-time employees, that they automatically be diverted to FOIL. And I'm wondering if there could be a couple uh, internal policy changes that, you know, improve that situation. Because as a council member, I'm more than happy to use my access to sit with a resident or call a resident back and walk them through 
based on what I already have to know for my duties. So there are things that certainly if they are asking an employee, there's internal policies that are like, you know, if it's someone from the press, um, that they need to be diverted to the supervisor's office or to FOIL. So I'm wondering if we need to, with, with chronic FOILers or with people who are, maybe just have questions and are FOILing documents to try to answer their own questions, um, give them maybe some kind of opportunity to set an appointment with one of us, anyone who has that knowledge and just be walked through those documents rather than that all being laid on your office. So that was a, a thought. Then there's the difference between, you know, everyone who comes in the building has to go through the, um, I'm going to call it the airlock, the, um, you know, the seal that, you know, you can't just walk freely in the building. So you've been sort of, um, as that front office, we discussed that you're the greeter. But there's obviously that's not typical because other clerk's offices can close. So I'm, I'm just wondering if discussions about, you know, getting a curtain and having clerk's office hours and then having sort of like an intercom system and, and sort of all these changes that could be made to alleviate, um, you know, these issues that keep coming up for your office where that you have those people who come in and you marry them, right? You, you're doing like appointment work and office work and that is a known number that we can compare statistically to last year, right? Um, but the amount of people just coming in um, to town hall, like is that what we are saying is part of her duties and we're going to allocate pay to compensate that, like that's not a discussion that we've explicitly had. It's fallen on her office. Is that something that we are looking to move forward with? Because there are other, there's a mixture of options. Like there's a mixture of like acknowledging the problem, addressing it differently, doing a partial raise based on, you know, you see what I'm saying? So can I start to comment on your oh, sure. questions? Yeah. Um, as far as FOILs, the only town board member that really requests documents is Mary. And be it if she had come in the office or whatever, you know, we provide her with those. But because of the number of things, I guess, I don't even want to say coming in as a new council member, because Dory and Sal both, when they came on, weren't requesting all the information that you are. I'm not saying that that's good or bad. I'm just saying that we haven't gotten those requests. So because I'm, of, just to clarify, I am not. I want to, I want to interrupt because I let you speak and I did not interrupt you. So I'm I would appreciate the, the same foiler. respect. I'm okay? not the 300 foiler. I just want that okay, for a point so, of respect. So in order to keep track of the requests that you were putting into my office. Um, I don't know why this is focused on me because I'm not. The requests the that you were putting into my office we decided to have you put them through the FOIL tracker to keep better track of them as opposed to all these emails with emails from residents, um, just in general, all the emails that we get in the course of a day. So that is, and that's not the bulk of our FOIL requests. Alyssa can, can vouch for her, the building department that they are very busy right now with FOILs, are you not? Okay? okay. So FOILs get handled through my office. Let the record show that Alyssa did shake her head yes. But what does this have to do with me? I don't understand why this is we're being talking about We're talking about FOIL requests. That it's, not, not, it's not all FOILs or requests, forget FOILs, from Councilwoman Richardson. Okay. Um, the second part, my, my office, there's somebody always here. We do not close for lunch. We are always here for the public. Um, I'm trying to, to remember everything that you, you put out there that I Basically, want to answer. Basically, I'm just trying to propose solutions to that because you'd brought up that you can't close, that you, you are burdened by this, and I'm just we're trying not, to We're not burdened by it. Okay. We just, we don't close. Yes, so I just wanted to provide that option of there are mediations to that problem other than 
that burden or that workload falling it's on not, you? It's not a burden. Okay. We are, last we are time public, we discussed this. We are here to serve the public. That's what we do. Um, Never heard. We literally uh, had an entire conversation about how her office is the most burdened. Uh, we have the highest volume of people that she's the greeter. We had, we, and then she announced a blanket 90-day foil policy, which was which we have not changed. legal because it was illegal. And the State Department and Coog and every single All right, let's get, authority let's, that could let, weigh let, in. Let, let's get off this and did. focus on, you know, why we're here. Why we're so, here. so here's my concern for um, the clerk and for the highway superintendent. Um, this is their full-time job, right? The, the rest of us have other means of income, right? And they have health insurance that they will be paying into, and the health insurance has increased significantly. So while we have opted to stay flat with the town board salaries and the judges' salaries, it will, if we stay flat with the town clerk salary and the highway superintendent's salary, they're actually getting a salary cut because their contribution toward their health insurance policy is going to go up significantly. So I think we need to take that into consideration. So I would not like to keep, um, I would not like to keep their, their salaries flat. Okay. Right? I don't I want it to cost them. I sure, to but the make amount a proposed. As, well. um, as far as health insurance costs, I don't know exactly how many dollars their health insurance is going to raise, but let's say it's a hundred dollars. It's going up, but we give them a two percent raise or whatever number, and it ends up we end up giving them a five hundred dollar increase. Well, that's not that. That's more than what you were just saying. So. Um, if you want to say that their salary will increase by just the amount of the health insurance, that's one thing. But I have a different question. Revenue. We talked about revenue and the courts being down. I think I looked before and we didn't sell as many easy passes and we didn't sell as many hunting licenses, even though hunting season is starting now. So as far as the revenue portion of that department, do you have any comments? Do you have those reports for um, Easy Pass and DEC that I provide monthly to finance? Supervisor Cardone, are you the liaison for the clerk's office currently? What does that have to do? I want to direct the question to the correct person. I want to know if direct revenue is up or down. Is it your, are you the liaison? Direct it, direct it. I'm, but you're also the budgetary officer. I understand that. Direct it to the clerk. Well, well she just asked Mary if we were in my possession of it. My question to the clerk is, how many easy passes did we allocate for the year? Where do you stand now? And the same thing with any other revenue that the uh, clerk's office might take in, whether it's marriage licenses, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So what I would say to that is because I was not prepared to come with that information tonight, if you want to go on to another department, I would be happy to go into my office and print out a report from last year to date and this year to date to get you those numbers. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I just assumed that if we're doing it off of revenue for the courts, I think that's more than a fair metric to bring up. Um, and she'll get us that information. So yeah, so we'd be happy to go on to a different department so that you can go print that up. Thank uh, you. While we're on the subject of um, health insurance, to circle back to the town board, are there part-time elected officials currently receiving health insurance? You have to ask finance. Okay, because um, while we're talking about not giving ourselves raises, um, we own, you know, we make a certain salary as part-time electeds. That's, you know, a part-time salary, and that is much lower than the cost of if we all opted in on the town board these part-time electeds into the um, provided health care plan, um, which is offered. It was offered to me when I um, was onboarded. So I. Um, 
do not believe that that is something that we should continue um, provided to, uh, providing to part-time electeds because it winds a, up being that's a, more. That's a topic for a different night. No, it's not. Cause, it's, yeah, because we're part talking of about budget. individual elected salaries here. It's got but none... this is part of the town board's what you'd be paying us if we all the had a health care plan. The town board salaries have already been. Approved. Yeah, we agreed on that already. We yes, agreed on that. I know that. So if you want to, if you want to bring it up at a future meeting, I'm not talking about you're the salaries right now, and I'm looping back to the fact that the hidden cost isn't the salaries, it's the benefits that would total more than our salaries. So I would like to earmark that for future discussion as well. That's I'm fine, saying, that's fine. While we were changing the topic. Okay, are you gonna go get your information? Okay. Thank you. Uh, up to Pat. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm gonna make a, uh, a big push for Pat and a, uh, a, a substantial increase. Uh, he has been here two years. Uh, he has employees that are within, uh, I want to say, three to four percent of his salary. I think he has taken on and done a lot more in the last two years uh, than anybody has done in the last ten years, uh, going back to the Roy Montagna days. He has constantly looked at different ways to uh, handle uh, taking care of roads. Uh, there's, you know, three methods that I know of, complete milling, fogging, and chip sealing. Uh, and then you have oil and chip uh, as well. Uh, I think he has, he has represented this town in a very uh, admirable way. He is on the, I'm going to say, lower end of the highway superintendents in the county. And yet, uh, I, I believe we are up on the higher end uh, in road miles. I, I know of two towns that probably have more road miles than us at Warwick and probably way we yonder. Uh, I, okay. I, I think that he's gonna be taking on most likely the construction of a new highway garage next year. We have some major improvements and maintenance that need to be done in Water District 1, uh, possibly Water District 14. And uh, I know that going forward, uh, he, will, he will represent us in a way that would uh, more than uh, pay for any increase uh, that, that we can offer him. That's all I have to say. Do we have those figures? for road mileage and comptrollers, uh, you know, comparisons from I know, other towns? I know that Warwick's road miles are about 160, and I know that ours are 63, Pat? Yes. Right, okay. but what's the pay, um, you know, and... What's, what's the pay? Yeah, I would need, I would need both of those factors. Like, like, we were comparing the road mileage, but I would also need road mileage and salary of, you know, those other superintendents. Also, if they're um, a water superintendent or what other licenses they hold, and also garbage. You know, some superintendents yeah. have to do what, what garbage their responsibilities as well. are. You want, you want to yes, talk about yes, that, sir. Pat? So, thank you for your consideration, board. I really appreciate it. But I will, I'm, I'm going to read off a couple of things here. Um, town of Montgomery, the salary is 97000 with a stipend of 18000 115000 is their final salary. Um, and that's highway MS4 parks work, no water, no grounds. Uh, town of Hamptonburg, highway MS4 parks, no water, no grounds, 103,000. Town of Monroe, 94,000 is my total. Um, town of Cornwall, highway sanitation, uh, 106,000, no water. Town of Woodbury, 125,000, highway MS4 some water repairs, and some parks capital. Town of Chester, part-time highway superintendent is $80,000 a year. Town of Chester, working leader is $110,000 a year. And they have some water repairs. Superintendent is roughly 20 hours per week. Working leader, who is salary, runs the daily operations. Town of Blooming Grove is $82,000 with a $10,000 stipend, which equals $92,000. Highway, MS4, water repairs, 
highway capital uh, work, um, the average salary of a working leader and highway superintendent, the average salary is 1065 And could you just reiterate your specific, I, I know you're comparing it by saying no water and then some of them do sanitation, but we obviously farm out our garbage contracts. So could you just reiterate your? Yes, I, my office, myself and my office staff, which is Angelina, we have all the garbage calls. So it's not like we don't do sanitation. We do, I do all of the water. Um, with John underneath me. Um, so, so. so when you say, when you're comparing the positions. Yes. Um, and you're saying Woodbury or wh whatever uh, municipality you had mentioned had done sanitation. Are you saying that they are managing it similarly to your office or? They have, they have their trucks too. Okay. So, so that's what I want. Yes. I want to just have um, yes. that sort of in front. I'm sorry that I don't have that in front of me. I would have. Right. No, I, I brought that with me. Um, uh, so you're, yes, I, I, I know you're managing a lot of things. I'm just trying right. because I know uh, personally just Woodbury throws a ton of positions into one and, and so I know that their pay is higher because it's falling on a lot is falling on one man over there because it's, they, a, it's the same here. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to be clear um, because the garbage is obviously a, a cost. Um, and the garbage complaints here are there is so many. We also do yard waste here, which is another big, big thing that we have. Um, we took that on in house. People are ecstatic that we did it, but there's a lot of work to it um, to manage it. Um, the drop-off facility, you're yes, saying? Yes, okay. and, and the compost out on Lakes Road. Um, so, and, I, and I will tell you that one of my employees is already $9,000 ahead of me for this year in salary. Uh, just the because other, he's in the union? or Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I have one other question. Um, your staff is actually smaller than some of the other municipalities you mentioned, Correct. Correct. We are way smaller. So you're doing and more yes. with less. Right. Yes. And, and to be honest with you, most highway superintendents don't have their boots on the ground like I do. I'm out there working with my men. <laughs> I, you see me, Mary. I get dirty with them. Um, I'm not one of those absentee ones that doesn't come out to a water break in the middle of the night. I'm out there with them. Um, plowing. I plow. We're shorthanded. I get in a truck, and I'm out on plow routes. Um, I, I am not def afraid to do any of these jobs. And like I tell my employees that everything you've done or are gonna do, I've done it already. I've been a garbage man, I've driven a garbage truck, I've been in construction, I've been a mechanic. Um, and that's another way that we are really saving money is by a lot of the stuff in-house is me, me overseeing what's going on mechanically in, inside, so. So definitely to have something, because it, Councilman Richardson alluded to it already, there's a union contract. Yes. So your, your employees are going to get another raise. Yes. And you will still be further below what yes. that top person every, is making. Every year, um, it, it's going to fall farther and farther behind because uh, in 25, they get a 4.5% raise. In 26, they get a 4.5% raise as well, as per their union contract. A little more, sorry. I didn't mix up with another department, sorry. Any other questions for Pat? Um, I don't dispute, you know, the entirety of his argument. It's just, again, the concept of doing this with out any documents being sent to us in advance so that we could review that, you know, in writing and then do some back of the envelope math for specifically the number um, that would overall affect the budget. I mean. Fortunately, uh, we have to decide this this evening because of the posting. And if that was the case, uh, you probably should have called Pat and requested it. Oh, you mean we scheduled a random special meeting on Friday and then posted it so, for Monday? So to get back on track, I'm doing a little bit of that back of the envelope math. 
if we were to get Pat, the highway superintendent, sorry, to the average salary of $106,500, that would be a 13.3% increase. Ouch. Yeah, that's... But if we were to get him to the next salary above him, right, which is $103,000 in the town of Hamptonburg, that would be a 9.6. What does your increase. union guy make? What is my union? That you reference that he's 9,000 ahead of you? He gets, he gets overtime as well, is the reason why he's up. But he's an HEO1 base. He's 40, 37 an hour. Okay, so, my, so, but we can't really use him because as a metric, if you're talking about overtime, then can we? Well, because Pat does overtime anytime he's got right. a snowstorm. But he's an elected he official. He doesn't have right. to do overtime. and He doesn't have to, but he does. He does. I yeah. Can, I can and, tell you, I don't that, have to, but. but and the, that should account for a suffer. lot. With the staffing that we I have. I do overtime, too. Is he, yeah. is he a, a 35 hour? He's a 40 hour he's employee. He's a 40 hour. Yes. Yes. So. So I'll give you, so I'll, I'll go to his okay. base salary is 83,969. He's mm -hmm. been there since February mm -hmm. is wh how long he's been there. Um, we'll, go, we'll go to another employee, 86,278 without overtime. All right, so can you say your base again? I don't have the. Um... Uh, the, the base on one of the employees, I'm not going to mention names. No, no, uh, no. Right, don't. But the base on another employee is 86,278,40. Is and that's for this, this contractual that's, year? That's for 24. Next year, what is their rate, what, what are they going up to? Going up 4%. Four, uh, no, they're going up 4.5% four four and and four and and next year is what they're going up. So that employee that I just spoke of will be going to 90,168 next year. The following year, 94,224 is what he'll be going up the following year in 26. Uh, what she mentioned about the next salary up in Hamptonburg is basically matching him. Yes. Okay. Yes, so that would be a 9.6% raise. What was that number? 9.6? 103. Yeah, 103. If we got him to the, the, the next Hamptonburg. I, I mean, I'd, I'd like, I be, I'd like I to see him. So, I, I'd like to see him... Uh, Somebody want to make a motion? Well, I had another question. Do you also get a stipend? I forgot. Yeah. That's including my stipend. That's including okay. the stipend. That's including it. That's okay. total salary is All what right. that is. Um, and for working leaders, is this um, a phenomenon? That's a question. Is this a phenomenon that happens because an elected official versus a, a union working leader and maybe delegation and overtime, is, is this a phenomenon seen in places around Orange County. What do you mean phenomenon? Uh, the phenomenon you're mentioning where he's making incidentally the, more the, money. The salaries that I just read you yeah. are not the coordinators. I didn't even add those up because I didn't have time and I didn't get the information. But you see what I'm some... asking is that, is it a phenomenon that someone in the department winds up maybe making it, more than no, the... No, okay. not at all. It's not a normal. It's, yeah. it's a, there's a contract there and the overtime is divided up evenly. Everybody has the opportunity. I have to do a call-out list. Even if I, have, if I have a branch in a road and there's somebody that lives in uh, Howells, well, he, he gets to come in. ask why it would be a 13% raise from, why is the budget like this from last time where we would wind up having to do this if this is um, the issue just because salaries became competitive? Yeah, so over the last two contracts, uh, we, we, we decided... Uh, the board decided to pay uh, all the highway workers to get them uh, in accordance with what other workers in the county are making. So one, one more thing I have quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the years of superintendent that they have. A year? So, what do you mean by that? Like how many years that they have? Experience. Oh, okay. Thank e you. Experience. So town of Montgomery, five years. Town of Hamptonburg, five years. Town of Monroe, two years here. Um, a total since 2010, I've been a superintendent. Um, Cornwall, four years. Town of Woodbury, 10 years. Five years for a town of Chester. Seven years for town of Blooming Grove. 
But I, what I will so, say that nobody sees is, you know, Pat, uh, on a daily basis, is consistently looking to save money for the taxpayers. Uh, there were two recent uh, jobs where, uh, you, you, what was what, what was the one with respect to uh, using a different supplier for one so, of the roads? I don't uh, want to mention the suppliers' names. Right. So well, I, I got price quotes, um, bid bid off of different bids um, to do our chip ceiling, and the one I got the first quote I got was on bid. Um, I said I, I have to get another. I have to do my due diligence. The second price quote I got off of another bid was $22,000 cheaper. If I would have just went off of the bid, it would have cost the taxpayers $22,000 more. That's why they voted for you. So that's what I mean is like we could sit here and discuss merit and experience and everything like that. I guess what the board is lacking is if we have that ability. You see what I'm saying is that if we had unlimited funds and it was in accordance with all of those merit-based and performance-based rankings, but we don't, again, have that overall um, effect that it's going to have on the budget. Does anyone want to speak to that? So I'm, I'm going to just go right to it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make a motion to approve a 9.5% increase uh, for our highway superintendent, Pat Patterson, for the 2025 year. I'll second. Is that for the 103? Is that what? No, that would get him. Yes, that would get him to the that 103. Not to, to the, the not to the yeah. average, but yeah. to the next closest highway superintendent. Call the question. Tough one, because I know the budget is tight, but um, I'll vote yay. Yeah, aye. Scancarello, aye. Cardone, aye. Aye. Cool, aye. I think that's fair to be in line with an employee in the department, so Richards and I. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Can we go back to town clerk? Because she brought us the information. Yeah. Could you repeat that? Going back to the town clerk. Oh. Okay, so you have the sheets in front of you. It looks like uh, there's uh, some increases currently through a portion of the year, uh, maybe not even three quarters. Uh, over, oh no, this is uh, it's, it's January it's through yep. September. Yep. Okay, so. There are increases, they're minimal, but uh, they, they, they are that, uh, so. What are, you, what are you saying, there are increases in costs, or are oh, there? She has increased her revenues. If you look at the revenues. In, revenues. Yeah. in 23 um, the, versus the, 24, well, she increased her revenue. The subtotal is less than 24. What's that? The subtotal is less. Go to the last page. The last yeah, page. go to the last page so you can understand it. I just don't understand that if we, why didn't you put this in board docs so that we could have just reviewed it ahead of time? I think she knew I was going to ask the question. Oh, I'm not asking. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the usually clerk. really involved in this I'm discussion. I'm, I'm not well. saying it's you, I'm saying it to him. Um, okay. Uh, make a motion that we a 6% increase for the town clerk. I'll second. Call the question. I'm voting nay simply because I think that's a little too high. Oh. Scancarello, aye. Pardon, aye. Oh, aye. Richards and nay. Okay, so moved. Okay. Uh, and, that, and just to clarify that, that, that ends the elected. Of, yeah. That ends the elected official salaries. Okay. Okay. Public comment? No public comment. Anybody want to speak? No? Okay. Oh, yeah? Come on up. You got to come up, state your name, where you live. What's that? No, that's okay. That's okay. I, no, that's all right. You got it. it we're, we're with you. Just you to have let to you turn know the microphone on. There's a little on the top, slide switch on the top. There's a little switch on the top. Just move it. No, it's up or down towards you, I think. Walk into it. Good evening. No? I can't tell. Just to let you know and anyone else wishing to speak, you'll have three minutes for public comment. 
Um, well, good evening. My name is Carmen Timmons, and I live, my address? Your street uh, is fine. Your street. Uh, Glen Eagles Court mm -hmm. on the newer uh, Presswick Gardens. And um, over the last two years, the superintendent, I think, has done an amazing job. We had um, called him. I'm not sure if, you know, you per se, you were the one, you know, it was someone else asking. Um, we were I called and someone else answered. And um, I think the race is going to be like 9%. I think it should be higher. Maybe not at the 13, which is the top. Um, but there is a lot of work that we have noticed here on Monroe. Before we moved here, we lived up in Middletown. So I've been an Orange County resident for the past 20 years. And I do see where my tax dollars are going when it comes to the roads. <clears throat> I'm sorry. When it comes to the roads, the cleanup, um, the snow, the garbage, uh, I have seen an improvement. Thank, Thank you. you for that. I don't know if it makes a difference because I know you guys already voted on his... Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 that was my fault. You, your time didn't expire. You, you, you still, you still have, have time. time. So, so I, like I said, I, I agree that maybe it shouldn't be at the top 13% um, as other superintendent, but I do feel that maybe it should be a little bit higher than it was just agreed. And thank you. I want to say thank you. I've never met you before, and I really, <laughs> I really appreciate you stepping Likely up story. to come in here That's and great. say this. As, uh, it's, it's, it's the ultimate I, I am, compliment. I am, I'm humbled by you it's stepping up there compliment. because, as I said, I've never, I've never met you before. We, but we, we like feel the same way as you do. Thank you. Pat's a tireless yeah. worker. We feel the same and way And just as so you, you know, I've never met him before, so <laughs> I was just talking <laughs> off the cuff. Thank but you. And thank you. you. That's very kind of you. Make sure you go down the block a little bit. You made his day. Thank you. Yeah, you did make my day. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Anyone else? Nope. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Call the question. Ingham, I. Scancarello, I. Cardone, I. Cool, I. Richardson, I. Okay, so moved. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Dylan. You brought cash, right, Pat? Oh, <laughs>